Maiden Abyss is one of my favorite animes of all time. Not because of its characters, but because of the world it describes. A giant layered mysterious hole in the ground in which brave cave raiders go down looking for adventure and sometimes never come back. The abyss is beautiful and captivating, drawing people in, but it is also dangerous and keeps claiming the lives of many. The world of Maiden Abyss is, in my opinion, a perfect setting for a video game. Everything you need is already there. Major NPCs, a beautiful but dangerous world to explore, dozens of unique creatures, and a good enough world building that you almost have nothing to invent really. So I was really excited when I heard a Maiden Abyss game was going to be released. But due to one particular reason I will talk about later in the review, I was not able to get my hands on it when it came out. In this video, I will give you a complete and honest review of Made in Abyss Binary Star Falling into Darkness. I have finished the game in both game modes and got all the Steam achievements, so I finally think I have gathered enough data to truly review the game. I will try to get this review as spoiler free as possible, though I might show some locations. Let's get right into it. The Made in Abyss game was made by Chime Corporation, which was completely unknown to me and seems mostly unknown in general. They seem to mostly release anime related game and the only other one I can find on Steam is a ReZero game. That to me is something important to keep in mind for the rest of the review. Let's start to get the elephant out of the room and talk about the game on a technical point of view. I am not someone who is generally affected by the graphical quality of a game as I can enjoy something very outdated as long as the gameplay is good. That being said, I know a lot of people are, and Maiden Abyss is known for the quality of its landscapes and environment. The game is clearly outdated graphically. The environments don't look too bad, but could clearly be way better. I would say it helps with the visual clarity of the game, it makes it easy to identify items you can pick up, but it is really disappointing when you compare it to what the Abyss looks like in the anime or manga. The character models and animations, however, are fine, and the lighting is pretty good. I feel obligated to mention that the game still has quite a bit of bugs that can sometimes kill you. I also want to talk about another technical issue of the game. The AI in general is very limited, if not completely broken at times. Most enemies can't really chase you and keep spamming the same attacks depending on where you are, positioned compared to them. You also get some allies at time which are completely broken. They often get blocked and spam some animations with very annoying sound effects. They don't really follow you, they just teleport around whenever you climb or go down an area. Talking about sound, if the sound design in general is not too bad, the characters have a tendency to spam the same sounds or lines which can quickly get annoying. The music of the anime is a masterpiece and I expected them to reuse this already great work in the game. Sadly they didn't and if the work of a new composer does a good enough job in the game, it is nowhere near the original work of Kevin Penkin. Now let's talk gameplay. This game is a mix between a survival exploration game and an RPG. It is actually divided into two game modes, Hello Abyss and Deep in Abyss. Hello Abyss is some kind of long tutorial where you will play as the anime's main character Rico and go through some of the events of the Maiden Abyss main story. To be completely honest, it is mostly forgettable, as if you want to experience the story, the anime is simply way more interesting to look at, and it even is a pretty bad tutorial, as in this game mode you don't face most of the constraints that will appear in Deep in Abyss. Deep in Abyss is the real game. You play as your own customizable cave raider and follow an original story that starts just after Rico begins her adventure. You used to only be able to play Deep in Abyss after finishing Hello Abyss, but this has since been removed in a patch because people were simply too annoyed by it. This game is mostly going to be for people who already know about the universe and so have probably already read the manga or watched the anime. Hello Abyss is pretty bad and fortunately can be finished quite quickly. 
Deep in Abyss is really the main game mode, and this is where this review is going to get more positive. From what I have said to this point, a lot of you might think I didn't like the game or it is just bad, but this is not the case. Deep in Abyss is actually very enjoyable, and I will try to detail why while remaining as objective as possible, as this game clearly is not perfect. So as I said, in Deep in Abyss you play as your own cave raider, and will live through an original story with some interesting characters. The story is pretty interesting, but it is underdeveloped in my opinion. I think there should have been more scripted events to really set up the relationship of your character with the rest of the cast. I also want to point out that pretty much any person who knows the Maiden of this universe well enough will know from the start how the story ends. The story is clearly not the focus of the game though. What matters is, well, exploring the Abyss. Deep in Abyss's gameplay loop is exactly what you would expect from a cave raider everyday life. Go into the abyss to explore and find treasure, trying to delve always deeper. This is where I truly experienced the call of the abyss. I really felt this need to go deeper and explore. The game has actually a very solid basis which is a nice surprise. It is pretty demanding in many regards, it values preparation more than anything, and you can really feel the progress you make. Unlocking new equipments and skills feel very rewarding as you can really feel the impact of these on your future delves in the abyss. Now there are still things I would consider game design problems, but most of them are what I would call balancing issues as just tweaking some numbers would be enough. For example, after a few minutes spent inside an area, some minor enemies will start spawning indefinitely around you. The idea behind this is to force you to move quickly, but also to help you not run out of food too much. But most of the time the durability of our weapons goes down so quickly it is never a reliable solution and becomes more of an annoyance. I have seen quite a few people complain about carry weight, but I personally think it was fine. Overall, the survival mechanics are fine and not too demanding if you are careful enough. Let me talk quickly about how well I think the adaptation of the world of Made in Abyss is done. In my opinion, it is very hard to make a bad Made in Abyss video game. What I mean by this is that the Made in Abyss universe is simply incredibly fitting for a video game. Everything is there for the taking and game devs do not have to invent much. The author of Made in Abyss, Akihiko Tsukushi, has admitted that he took inspiration from video games to design his world. Everything is there, artifacts to collect, a gradient in difficulty the deeper you go, distinctive areas with a diverse and dangerous fauna, memorable characters, everything is there. And I personally think that this is one thing that simply saves the game. The core concept of Made in Abyss is pretty well transcripted, for it is far from technically perfect. All of the emblematic creatures of a manga are there, the Curse of the Abyss is integrated as gameplay mechanic, and most of the locations can clearly be identified. The Made in Abyss universe is pretty well respected, and I think any fan of this fictional world will appreciate it. However, I think Made in Abyss's dark and violent side is not well enough integrated. There is of course the gruesome death animations which are quite cool, and quite a few story elements that reflect the danger and horror side of the Abyss but you don't really feel it in the general gameplay. Because of a janky AI, most of the enemies can be avoided without even sneaking, and their cunning nature depicted in the manga is not there at all. The violence of the Abyss is not there enough in my opinion. Apart from a very few unique and scripted events, you don't really encounter many endangered or dead cave raiders. I think the game really could have used some randomly generated events to cover this part, Nothing too complicated, but seeing a corpse weeper feeding on a deceased cave raider instead of just turning in circles in the sky would have been more interesting. So let me get to my conclusion. Is Made in Abyss Binary Star Falling into Darkness a good game I recommend you play? Well yes and no. First of all, I have not mentioned it yet, but the game is sold for the price of a full triple A game, which in my opinion is way too high for a game like this. I personally think it should not be more than $30. That is actually the reason I took so long to play this game, as I got it for 23 euros when it was at a discount. For a game so technically outdated and with quite a few flaws, I do not think such a high price is justified. I think most of the pricing comes from the fact that it is a licensed game of the Made in Abyss universe, and they got some of the anime series voice actors in it. But when I look at the game, I still believe $60 is way too much for what you get. I also think this game is a terrible first introduction to the Made in Abyss universe. Hello Abyss, the part where you play as the main characters of the manga, is simply a worse way to tell the same story. And if you want to get into Made in Abyss, I would highly recommend you watch the anime or read the manga first. Now if you are a big fan of Made in Abyss, 
and you are not afraid of relatively punishing games, I definitely think you can have a wonderful experience playing this game. The feel of the FPS is there, and the source material is just so good that it lifts the game up. The general gameplay and gameplay loop are pretty enjoyable, and I think it is a very solid basis. Keep in mind, I really think this is not a game you play for the story, but more for the exploration of the abyss and the challenge it represents. Though it can be hard and frustrating at times, I found myself insanely satisfied after a hard but successful IFS delve. The payoff is huge, and I really enjoyed my time playing it. I also think the game has great modding potential, and I will definitely be looking at the modding community for this game. So to sum this up in a short sentence, if you like Made in Abyss and are not afraid of a fascinating but challenging experience, then you will surely enjoy this game. I personally hope you will give this game a chance because I really think Made in Abyss needs more video game adaptations. The universe is just so well built for a video game, it would be a crime not to make more games about it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. I will probably make a few more videos about this game, so if you are interested, do not hesitate to subscribe and check out some of my content on other games. I'll see you again. Bye.